All right, welcome back everybody. We're gonna talk a little bit today about some of the lessons that we learned from our two Pogels that we did recently, one on the nuclear atom and the second on ions. And we're gonna talk about how we would go about finding the number of protons, electrons, and neutrons in a particular isotope. Let's start with something simple. Let's say that I have um, I have potassium 39. That 39 represents the mass number. And sometimes you'll hear people call this or write it out as in a in a full word, potassium and then dash 39 to represent that particular isotope. Sometimes you won't find them writing the atomic number because potassium's atomic number never changes. That's something that you could look up. So let's say we have this particular isotope of potassium, and we want to know how many protons does it have, how many uh, electrons does it have, and how many neutrons does it have. For the number of protons, we always want to look at the atomic number. It defines the type of element that we're dealing with but it also defines the number of protons that are in that uh, particular isotope. So here we would say this is an atom that has 19 protons. If I wanted to find the number of neutrons, then what I really need to look at is the mass number. The mass number here is given as 39. We need to remember that that represents the number of protons plus the number of neutrons. So if I want to find just the neutrons, I need to take the mass number minus the atomic number, and that's going to leave me with just neutrons. So in this case, it would be 39, my mass number, minus 19, the atomic number. That gives me 20, and that's equal to the number of neutrons. As long as you're dealing with a neutral atom, and you're going to know that if you take a look Let's say you look up here in this upper right hand section of that of that isotope symbol. As long as there's no charge written there, then the number of positive charges in this atom have to be balanced by the number of negative uh, charges in the atom. And so we would expect, since there are 19 positive charges with the 19 protons that we would have an equal number of electrons. That's always the case as long as you're dealing with a neutral atom. But what if it's not neutral? When it's not neutral, let's say we've got potassium again, but this time we have a plus one charge written up in the right hand corner. So it's listed as plus one. And I want to count the number of protons, the number of electrons, and the number of neutrons. Well, nothing changes for our protons or for our neutrons. Still have 19 protons. As long as it's potassium, it's going to have 19 protons. Neutrons is still mass number minus the atomic number. It's still equal to 20. But if I want to know something about the number of electrons, I've got to pay attention to that charge. It's plus one, and this is often going to go opposite of the way students think about it. So let's talk this through. Electrons we know are negative. So it turns out if I'm missing an electron, if I've lost an electron, that means I have one more positive charge then I do negative charges, and that gives me the plus one charge overall, okay? So a plus one ion is actually missing electrons from its neutral state. Anytime you have a plus ion, we call that a cation. Doesn't matter if it's plus one or plus two or plus three, what have you. So let's look at another case. Let's say I've got something that is a negative ion. Let's say I've got fluorine with a minus one charge 
and we'll say it's 9 in 20, something like that, mass, mass number of 20. Protons is always equal to the atomic number, so that's 9. Neutrons is always equal to the mass number minus the atomic number. In this case, that's going to be 11, 20 minus 9. And the electrons, I need to look at the overall charge. And again, in this particular case, I've got a charge equal to negative 1. That means there's one more negative charge than there is positive charges. And so in this particular case, we're looking for 10 electrons, one additional negative charge compared to the number of positive charges. Anytime you have a negative ion, we call that an anion. Okay, very good. I think we're ready to move on to the next thing. See you next time.